Oh my God, I, there's so much and it's perfect timing because it just launched a couple of days that the show launched. Tell us about the reaction. How has people and the public has, what have, what, what are they saying? Well, I've heard such very wonderful, positive things. Uh, people react to the Puerto Rican flag. Oh my goodness, there's a Puerto Rican flag in a kid show. They react to the number six train that runs through the neighborhood that Alma lives in because obviously uh, the number six train is a prominent uh, icon in the Puerto Rican Bronx community. Uh, I just received a lovely email from someone who said she enjoyed talking to her child after the show was over okay. about uh, what Alma was thinking and whether she came to the right solution and the wrong solution. And that's exactly what we Right. Want. So that jumps into my next question. Tell us a little bit about the show and where this amazing idea of creating a show like this originated. Well, uh, PBS Kids asked me to create a show, a Latin sh family show based with a Latin family. And because I'm New Yorican, Puerto Rican, I made them that and I placed them in the South Bronx because that's where, uh, where I was born. Now, the, the mission of the show was left up to me. And I noticed that a lot of kids uh, didn't think they were smart because they couldn't memorize, because there were a lot of kids in their classroom, because their parents were busy, because they get tested so much these days, yeah. because we expect so much from them, uh, because they have to learn uh, things at the very same moment as their friends, not at their own pace. And all of these reasons thought they were less than. And I thought, wait a minute, I want these kids to know that everybody has a brain and we all see the world differently and we all could think about things. And so Alma's way is that she stops in the middle of the show and cuando se mete en un lío, when she gets into a problem <laughs> right. and she says, let me think about this. Which we, are, I believe they're called uh, thought moments or yeah, thinking thought moments. Think throughs, think, think throughs. Through. Yeah, she's going to think it through. That's that's such a great idea, um, Sonia. Also, I, I read that this is, was also a reflection of your own childhood when you were growing up, you know. Um, well, Absolutely, absolutely. I think every creative endeavor has to start from a personal point of view. And I was raised in a tumultuous childhood in a household ruled by domestic violence. Oh. And I found that I would go into my head to escape, to figure things out, to separate myself from what was going on. And so uh, that obviously is the personal component. And then there's the joyous component of creating yeah. characters that were like my tia. Uh, there's a Eddie Mambo is a character in the in the program that's based on my primo Eddie Guago Rivera and another little boy that I knew in the neighborhood who had polio. So all of that is in this there. This is like so amazing. And it, it's like I've seen some snippets of it here and there. And it just makes you feel transported, you know, like this is real life experiences. You know, you have a, a beautiful way of how to, to teach children how to embrace culture through language, food, music. And what kid would not identify, especially if you grew up in the Heights, in the Bronx, even in Queens. I think every kid in the five boroughs can identify with that. Now, I, with the whole discussion of diversity here and diversity and that and happening all around us, and would you say this shows another way to kind of make that breakthrough for kids to feel, you know, connected, identify? I mean, of course it is. That's the idea. But I know it's more about the think through moments and speaking for themselves. But I think diversity, it's probably also a big reason oh, for that you, you bet i mean it's a major reason for that because uh to get personal again i watched a lot of television when i was growing up in the south bronx in the 1950s shows like on tv land father knows best leave it to beaver and in those days you never saw any lines in the media know, you never I saw know. any people of color and i used to wonder what i was going to contribute to a society that i was invisible to what was I going to do? And then I got onto Sesame Street and that was great because 
I became what I needed to see when I was growing up. And Alma is further, is she's more me. She's more specifically yeah. me. So I want kids to relate to her. And you uh, had like this aha moment. That's me. So what, a, what a beautiful story. Now, I want to talk about how hard was it to find the voices and the characters or the actresses and actors for this? I know some of it, but I don't know all about it. Tell me a little bit about that. How hard was that to get for your show? Well, I'm happy to say it wasn't how hard at all. We had a plethora, we had a plethora of actors that were wonderful. Uh, uh, a lot of kids are in show business now. We had a lot of choices uh, as far as the kid actors goes. And I just want to reflect on the fact that when I started Sesame Street, there was nobody. <laughs> There were no Latin writers for the show. Now I, I can boast that we have uh, uh, Jorge Aguirre is our head writer. Yeah, tell us a little bit about all those uh, great Hispanics that are contributing that contributed to your show. I know Lin, Man Lin Manuel. What's one? Yes, music? of course. Right, Lin Manuel Miranda is just. I was so thrilled that he came uh, on board when I when I asked him through his father. It's interesting that. Uh, Lynn Manuel was on Sesame Street and I knew him mm -hmm. then, but I knew his father from being a Puerto Rican activist years, okay, uh, for many years. He's more of my generation. And so I asked, uh, I called up his father and I said, so hook me up with your son. I want him to, to write this song for me. And of course, uh, he rose to the occasion and he, you know, he can say in two words what most of us take 50 words to say. So the song has Lelo Lai in it, has Lelo Lai lyrics and, and of course, hip hop and rap because mm. it's in the Bronx. So it had yeah. to have a little bit of that. So kudos to Lynn and Bill Sherman who, who composed the music. And one more thing about the characters, mm -hmm. when you create a character, it's good to have an image in your mind as yeah. to what that character should look like. And uh, Abuelo, my image was uh, Luis Miranda, Lynn, Man <laughs> Lynn Manuel Miranda's father as what the Abuelo should look like. Wow. Now, do you do any of the voices? Yes, I play Granny Isa. I oh. play a grandmother, uh, uh, Alma's grandmother, and my mother's name was Isa. And so uh, so that's why that grandmother's named uh, Isa. And the family's name is Rivera, which was my mother's name. So move on, move to the side door of the explorer <laughs> we'll have a more of a real life experience a show for kids that they can identify and they can have like an, a moment like wait a minute that's me right there so this is how i handle we need more of that we need more of that positive image you know of of, of yourself and coming you know from the five boroughs and coming from puerto rican and then you mentioned the food as well you know which that's another you know beautiful detail to add because you don't see that often you know right i heard right. i think i read that they they had an episode with where they show how to make mofongo i believe was it mofongo yes right? it's mofongo it's mofongo <laughs> it's it's the it's the first episode and and the the joke is that uh she she tastes it and she decides it's got to taste better and she starts trying to cook the mofongo and uh, she messes it up I and really, then I really don't think kids are going to find any better programming you know I, I mean bilingual kids ones that are hispanics you know because there is always kids programming but something that's so direct it's like amazing I'm so I'm so happy you know thank you that you thank came you. through with this idea and you pulled it through and I I, I imagine it was probably a lot of work to get all oh. you know <laughs> how long did it take you to actually create the show and from from beginning to end just a little well uh, I was when they approached me I was still on Sesame Street and I left Sesame Street in like 2015. Okay, so, so that's, five. yeah, so that's how long the process is. And it's, you know, animation is new to me. Right. I had to learn a little bit of that. I was used to live action on camera. You work it out on the floor with the Muppets. Uh, but this, you have to sort of anticipate. Yeah, and you have to pre-record the voices way ahead Before. of the time that you see the images that go with those voices. So you have to have your ducks in order very very early oh, it's on a beautiful beautiful product 
ending. Thank so tell you. us what's next. Are you creating another beautiful show? <laughs> I pr- probably not for now because I probably bet you have a lot of work, but is there anything else new for you happening? Well, I have a, a book coming out called oh, uh, uh, C- Coming Up Cuban with uh, with this, with Scholastic. I have a, a couple of four books coming out with them over the years. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know everybody's going to say, but I thought she was Puerto Rican. I am Puerto Rican. I just was uh, in enthralled by the a Cuban experience that uh, uh, some tweens might have had in Cuba when when Castro changed everybody's uh, life. Yeah. So, but it's a, a young adult novel or a, okay, a middle we, grade novel. Yeah, we need yeah. that history out there. We anything that people anything that people can pitch in the table to make our history and our culture stand out. Right, there. right. And 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 something that I've learned and and uh, for us to really appreciate and love our cultures, I mm-hmm. uh, people say like, why is it important to have Hispanic heritage? celebrations okay. and I say because if you don't you don't in- celebrate your your culture you can't succeed and I remember that when I first got on Sesame Street a writer wrote that I was born in San Juan Puerto Rico and I was born in New York I was 21 mm-hmm. and I didn't correct him because I thought to myself I bet the producers want somebody of more course. from Puerto Rico yeah. more authentic and then I walked around nervous that we're going to ask me something about San Juan. And I said, wait a minute, what's up with this? What's wrong with me being New York? And I'm, you know, so I said it to them and they said, right. we, we don't care. And yeah, from, it's from that yeah. moment on, I felt powerful, strong. I'm who I was. Yeah, totally. And I, and I could contribute to Sesame Street. That and did not, so I, I want to wrap up this beautiful interview because I did say 10 minutes and I think it's 15. Oh, okay. And I just want to ask, is the show available in English and Spanish? And where can you watch the show? And uh, what platforms can you find it? Okay, you can Besides find it, PBS. right. Uh, <laughs> PBSKids.com on the internet. You could stream it. And also you could find out where, how to access the dubbed version of that um maybe alicia has some information on exactly that uh where you can and i want to give a appreciation to fred rogers productions and uh, ellen doherty who uh uh who is very supportive and you know uh uh really made this Mm -hmm. project come to fruition when she said you know what we got to take the animators to the South Bronx so they could see what it looks like. And yes. we did. Yes. Yes. I think this is keep, showing, keep shining, keep growing, thank, you know, thank you. Thank you for all the contributions you've done for the culture and our customs and language. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank I'll you. See you, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.